Families across Halls Creek are grappling with difficult choices. To stay or to go. We don't have the resources for them here. Eva Johnson was born in Halls Creek. A Jaru woman, she raised her eight children here, but sent them all away from the town she loves to boarding school. Now 13-year-old Yayan, one of Eva Johnson's 25 grandchildren, is preparing to do the same. Finally, they're going to somewhere where they can learn and be more educated and be someone that who they want to be. Um, make us proud. My mum sending me away. And so, like, she told me that I can get a thing. I can become who I want to be in life and all that. And that just made me feel, like, good. The goodbyes don't get any easier for the 60-year-old. You like going to school? Yeah, it's all right. But to her, leaving Halls Creek in search of a good education is her family's best hope. Well, it's their future. I can't live their future, but only they could live their future. And to make them become a part of what they're going to do, like in the time and age that they're in now, they have a choice. They can move on. It's entirely up to them. But many young people in Halls Creek aren't given a choice. Every night, groups of children roam the streets, often until dawn. Youth crime is at record levels. <laughs> On average, a car is stolen every five days, reaching a peak last year. Other crimes have also escalated. When you throw rocks or try to smash windows, it'll hit this before it actually hit the glass. Peter Booby makes security screens to protect houses from break-ins. But the company he works for is leaving Halls Creek. Concern over staff safety, a major factor. So we've had our cars stolen before. We've had cars like our office broken into. So I've just been like locking up the gate and they've walked past and just pegged rocks at us. Leaders say widespread overcrowding in housing is often what drives children to be out on the streets all night. Typically in areas classed as very remote, more than 50% of Indigenous people live in overcrowded households. But in Halls Creek, it's higher than 80%. All of these roads simply lead to overcrowding and um, we need to address that. Uh, if we're going to address any of the, you know, the kids on the street at night. Philip Cassell built his career in civil construction and now heads the local shire. He wants to turn this area of bushland into a development with 35 houses, better suited to Indigenous family structures. They need more open area. Um, they need bigger family orientated rooms rather than, you know, the typical uh, three bedroom, uh, one bathroom type home that we'd see in any of our major cities. Housing went wrong when we took colonialist development and tried to overlay it over um, traditional culture. For Eva Johnson, respecting culture is central to engaging the town's younger generations. We, we're so blessed to be living in, in a remote area like this. There's so many things that we can take them and teach them. We have water holes, we have a story to tell, the history to be told, it's all there. You can turn around the worstest kid, but where's the support for that? A question that many throughout this community and the state are desperately seeking answers to. Ted O'Connor, ABC News, Halls Creek.